French Dispatch is studded with stars and sprinkled with Wes Anderson's signature pastels and storybook design, though, like many of his works, it uses that whimsical approach as a cushion for weightier and more melancholy themes. This interconnected anthology, inspired by New Yorker articles Anderson read as a teenager, is his ode to print journalism of the past, and it arrives with his familiar visual flourishes, which dramatize both the thoughtfulness and the riveting energy of chronicling history as it unfolds. I'm naked, Mrs. Cremens. I can see that. Why are you crying? Tear gas. Also? I suppose I'm sad. The story begins with an obituary, both for editor Arthur Howitzer Jr., played by Bill Murray, and for the paper he founded 50 years prior, the French Dispatch of the Liberty, Kansas Evening Sun. Howitzer Jr. was a stern man of few words, but Anderson depicts him with reverence and with a solemn respect for a dying art. Another short prologue follows Herb St. Sazerac, a travel writer played by Owen Wilson, as he gives us a tour of the wryly named town of Ennui sur Blasé. It feels like a disaffected teenager's idea of French artistry, but the film is anything but nihilistic or emotionally distant, despite this tongue-in-cheek introduction. This story sets the stage for the rest of the film in two key ways. The first is how it uses Howitzer Jr. as a contrasting voice of reason and authority, reining in the fussy, though self-aware cynicism Anderson ascribes to Sazerac. The second is the way it uses color. Sazerac's tour of the city involves a split-screen contrast between black and white images of Ennui's past and contemporary color photographs, a simple visual language that continues throughout the film. Within each black and white flashback, brief bursts of color envelop the screen as if these fleeting moments and sensations from long ago have lingered with the characters in the present. It's art as memory, an idea the film eventually embodies. This brief travelogue is followed by the first main segment titled The Concrete Masterpiece. Here, Tilda Swinton's art critic J.K.L. Berenson tells the story of a long-incarcerated abstract artist Moses Rosenthaler, as well as his muse and prison guard Simone, and the wild-eyed art dealer Julian Cadazio. Cadazio is based on the real-life dealer Lord Duveen, but the story is also wildly original, both in its bleakly funny conception of artistic inspiration and self-loathing, and its frenzied depiction of comedic action scenes. The history in this segment is an uncanny blend between French flourishes and American atrocities. This hybrid approach to the past takes center stage in the second story, Revisions to a Manifesto, in which on-scene journalist, played by Frances McDormand, wrestles with her place in shaping history as she chronicles a youth revolution led by warring student factions. Anderson paints a starry-eyed picture of revolt here, with his Romeo and Juliet stand-ins, but also pierces the story's naive and boisterous fabric with brief hints of a more solemn reality. However, when the third main segment rolls around, even Anderson seems aware that there are only so many edges that can be sanded down. In The Private Dining Room of the Police Commissioner, he reimagines queer author and black civil rights activist James Baldwin as food critic Roebuck Wright, played by Jeffrey Wright, in a story that ranks among some of the finest visual and thematic work in the filmmaker's 25-year career. The segment shines brightest when it feels distinctly un-Anderson in nature. His signature playfulness is occasionally interrupted by stark and unsettling moments as silent, unspoken threats begin to hover over Wright's shoulder. In these moments, Anderson and cinematographer Robert Yeoman forego their usual wide angles and deep focus. Their rare use of a long lens not only blurs the vividly detailed backgrounds, but forces us to focus, first and foremost, on Wright's fears and the quiet ways his humanity is threatened. This segment has no lack of whimsy, of course, but what makes this story feel whole is the way its cartoonish madness is ultimately grounded in a real story of outsiders like Wright and Stephen Park's Lieutenant Nescafe, whose brief but meaningful interactions feature a complicated wistfulness hinting at a seemingly never-ending search for some idyllic belonging in different parts of the world. It's a little damp. Physically or metaphorically? Both based on the cover and the first four sentences. Don't criticize my manifesto. The French Dispatch is both an ode to print journalism and one of Wes Anderson's most richly detailed films. While based on real journalists and articles, each of its smaller segments is painted in Wes Anderson's signature whimsical style, culminating in one of the most effective and thoughtful stories of his career. For more, check out what we thought of Dune and Ghostbusters Afterlife. And for everything else, be sure to subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch. A message from the foreman. One hour to press. You're fired. Uh, really? Don't cry in my office.